Okay, let's start by opening a bit of a mystery box here. What are these? I don't know if this is something I Some kind of uh, heating heating device included. It's not extremely magnetic, but it's... We were theorizing that it's uh, iron oxide based. Uh, yeah, so this is a slightly different unboxing. Than Some leaves oh, gosh, and my cat. So this might be a good time to say that you may want to skip this particular video if you don't want to see any crawly critters. But if you like friendly little arthropods, then perhaps you may enjoy this or even find it relaxing. I think those are just warm packs. So, and then we've got, oh yeah, substrate. Oh yeah, and then I think these are the buggos. <laughs> it's fun to call them bugs, but they're actually more like oh, shrimp. Yeah. Oh, they look fine. Too great, you want some more paper? Oh, this is great. So I gotta make a, I gotta make a little spot for them to live now. I may need to make something bigger later on, but I, I think a lot of people use actually, it turns out, the same kind of little like six quart starlight containers that I use for shop organization. So this is my first isopod hangout, and you can see here I'm cutting some holes for ventilation. This is important because the isopods need fresh air but you have to limit the amount of ventilation so that they don't dry out. And then the mesh prevents, you know, household pests like flies and spiders from getting in there. And then the lowest layer here is actually a mix of kind of dead fibrous materials like bark and moss and some charcoal and that kind of thing. Here I'm trying to moisten it. I already made a mistake here though. I actually really should have boiled the substrate to sterilize it. And uh, we'll see that was a minor problem later. Yeah, little buggos. But I'm excited and I'm streaming and I want to get these guys a better home. Oh yeah. Let's try just putting this whole container in here. Also, I didn't notice it at the time, but you can probably see pretty clearly in the recording now that uh, at least two of them there didn't make it through shipping. Oh gosh, I don't want to hurt them. I think I can just dump this out and they'll all be fine. They're just laying on leaves here. So I've always thought these little critters were pretty cool since I was a kid. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, what a beautiful bucko. I would see him outside and hang out with them and watch them crawl around. And just recently I thought it would be cool to have another uh, critter around here. Maybe someone a little bit less demanding than my cat Tuco. So there are actually a lot of different kinds of isopods, like on the order of 10,000 different species total, uh, about half of those living in the ocean and half of them living on land. And people keep a variety of different isopod species, either as pets or as part of a cleanup crew in a vivarium where you might have like a lizard or a snake or a frog or something hanging out. So I might have you know, more of a reptile situation later on, but right now the, uh, the isopods are just pets hanging out on their own. And I think they're pretty cool. At this point I was enjoying the uh, handheld footage as well as handheld isopods, but starting to think <laughs> about a way to set up some stationary cameras so that I could do time lapses, but also because every time I open the box to uh, hang out with them and use my cell phone camera, they, uh, you know, they would get disturbed a bit and I would have to hang out with them just really quietly until they went back to what they were doing. I tried different camera modules, uh, a couple different kinds of webcams and other small cameras I could fit in there, even an old camcorder with an HDMI capture card. I liked the overhead fisheye lens view for getting the big picture, but I also really wanted to get some microscopes set up so that we could hang out with individual isopods. So I tried a few of these low-res USB microscopes and eventually a nicer HDMI microscope. So at that time, this critter right here is actually the smallest isopod that I knew I had. A couple about this size came in the original batch. And when I would look closely at the time-lapse footage, and especially the time-lapse microscope footage, 
I would start to notice some motion that I didn't really expect. And the closer I looked, it still just seemed like there were blurry pixels moving around. Whatever these were, they were way too small to be isopods. So then I got out the optical microscope and started trying to transfer all the isopods one by one out of there into a clean, fresh habitat and identify what all the other bugs were using a nicer microscope. So it looks like we had a couple of springtails. And the springtails are actually probably fine. I wasn't really expecting them, but you know, they're not that unusual to see around isopods. They eat leaf fungus and they're actually generally pretty beneficial. But while I wasn't able to get any clear photos or videos of them, I also saw some mites, which had me more worried. It's likely I overreacted, and these are probably just a harmless kind of mite that just wants to eat the leaves and leave the isopods alone, but some types of mites are actually isopod parasites, and you want to keep a lookout for those. So I set up a larger box at that point with freshly boiled leaves and substrate, and this time lapse shows the leaves drying out a bit, but uh, no unexpected critters this time. And then I introduced the isopods in one by one. I'm using a water bath this time to provide a more uniform temperature environment, and the larger box has enough room for a rehoused version of my usual lab microscope with a 3D printed enclosure. I can get a pretty clear view of the munching isopods with this microscope, but the, uh, the area that I have to view is really small compared to the amount of space they actually have to wander around in, so it helps to have some wider cameras and to uh, put some food down in front of the microscope. This is another behavior I've been seeing a lot of. It's related to mating, but I think most of what you're seeing is actually mate guarding, where one of the males who's recently mated with a female actually stays on top of her for a long time to prevent nearby males from competing. So it's been interesting watching them from different time scales and different camera angles. One thing I found pretty interesting was this critter who uh, buried themselves under the substrate by a couple inches on one side of the enclosure. So I adjusted this external kind of low-res USB microscope to get a better view, and I thought I saw something moving around nearby. And in the recording here, you can definitely see one little crawling critter nearby already. So then I brought the microscope in closer, and, you know, the image is terrible, there's hardly any light, but then I saw this. I was looking closely, and several of these little newborn isopods started crawling out of their mom's uh, pouch, the uh, marsupium. And the life cycle of an isopod is pretty interesting. But yeah, there's this point where they are ready to go and after hanging out with their mom for a while, kind of on their belly or so, they uh, all leave. Mom seems to be struggling to get a bunch of them off, off her legs at this point. So I stayed around the mom, just trying to, you know, see what she was doing for a little while. Um, she hung out for a bit and then gradually made her way back to the surface, leaving the babies to disperse in that area. And then I started to see the small isopods showing up much further from that area. Here's one crossing paths with the uh, nicer microscope inside the box. I did manage to follow around a couple of the newborns with the small microscope, at least for a little while. This one camped out on a leaf that was sort of partially buried near the edge of the container and just walked around on the leaf for a while, eating and pooping. Looking pretty cute, though. So we've been talking about different ways on the live streams of capturing this whole isopod situation with cameras. I've had the single fisheye camera, I've had zoom lenses, and we've talked about different ways of setting up grids of cameras. It's been fun, though, to find the locations where the isopods like hanging out in this fairly large enclosure and then setting up cameras in those spots specifically. They seem to enjoy this corner. You know, maybe it has a good moisture level or maybe the food is tasty. Maybe they just happen to set up shop there and then the uh, positive feedback loop of uh, isopod pheromones kept them in the area. So if you enjoy this camera feed that you're seeing here, I'm actually live streaming this uh, you know, as close to 24-7 as I can, and you can find the link to that in the description. The Eyes Opod. 
live stream. Well, that's about all I had to say about these guys right now. I'll leave you with some more footage of them on the way out, but um, I will say that if you if you like uh, what I'm doing here, I have some other videos you might uh, want to check out. But there's also a whole separate video site I've been trying to run on diode.zone that you might find interesting. Just kind of a friendly hangout for videos about making stuff, but also some, you know, pet videos. And, uh, yeah, I also do live streams, and if you like what I'm doing, uh, check out my Patreon page. This is all supported by viewers like you. Even the munching ice pods, because of viewers like you. Anyway, thanks. I'll be quiet.